This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Sadie Eck. And I am Courtney Eck. And I'm getting over a cold. Maybe yes, it's just, cold in a year. I'm waiting for Sadie to burst into a coughing fit because that's, yeah. that's yeah. been her life. Yeah, for the last few days. And it just took me like three or four tries to get our introduction right. Yeah, I might um, tack them on to the end of this episode just so you can hear <laughs> Sadie's humiliation. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be quiet and let Courtney tell us the story. Yeah, and tonight I'm going to tell you probably the most straightforward serial killer tale I've ever heard about. It's horrible, and it's swift. Hmm. Uh, I, was, I realized we were on a little bit of a serial killer kick. I know, I'm, I'm I know. Okay for somebody it. who doesn't like serial kill, telling ki- serial killer stories, I really can't stop finding serial killer stories to tell. Um, I'm titling this one, The Worst Possible Person and Serial Killer, Gerard John Schaefer Jr., so on October 6, 1966, Nancy Leekner and her friend Pamela Nader were picnicking in the Ocala National Forest with their skin diving club, the Aquaholics. Between 2 and 3 p.m., the two women left the group and headed into the woods, leaving their purses, clothing, glasses, and other personal belongings behind. A large search was organized when the two didn't return, and despite a massive canvas of the area and police investigation, They were never seen again. In September of 1969, Lee Bonadies was living with her husband Charles in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and even though the couple had only been married a month before, their relationship was described as a little bit rocky. Things got even rockier when Lee announced one day that her former neighbor had offered her a job with the CIA, which would allow her to travel and pull in a $20,000 salary. Hmm. Charles laughed it off, thinking the neighbor's offer was ridiculous, and on September 8th, he came home to a note from Lee that stated she'd gone to Miami to pursue the job. Seems like every once in a while these CIA jobs pop up, you know, like these random, you're going to work for the CIA. (laughs) (laughs) I just don't think that's really how the CIA works. I know, well, maybe in the 1960s that would seem... Plausible. I'm assuming that, yeah, yeah, like the CIA was just really on everyone's radar, the Cold War and everything. Like mm-hmm. people thought maybe they needed extra agents and they were just going to approach random women. But I mean, come to think of it, maybe that is, I don't really, I mean, I don't think <laughs> so. <laughs> See, I <laughs> just don't know. My neighbor came over and was like, hey, I got a job. The CIA wants you. I'd be like, mm, okay. Well, yeah. Right. Don't think so. So Lee's brother got in contact with the neighbor, who reported that Lee had called him to see if he'd give her a ride to the airport to go to Cincinnati in a couple of days, but had never followed up, so he'd never given her a ride. And this is a previous neighbor from, like, a long time ago, Mm -hmm. just to be clear. Lee's car was found abandoned in a nearby parking lot, and she was never seen again. In December of 1969... Carmen Halleck was a cocktail waitress working in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. On December 18th, Carmen called her sister-in-law to tell her of an exciting opportunity that had fallen into her lap. She said she'd met a teacher at a local junior college who said he did undercover work for the government and was interested in recruiting her to help him. If she agreed, her new career would take her all over the world and she'd be paid a high salary. Carmen put on a nice black dress and black heels and set off to meet her recruiter, excited for what the future held. I hate it. I know. Halleck's car was also found abandoned in a nearby parking lot a few days later, and she was never seen again. On December 29th, 1969, a family friend brought nine-year-old Peggy Ron and an uncle brought eight-year-old Wendy Stevenson to Pompano Beach for the day. While the two girls went to school together, they didn't know each other very well and hadn't hung out until they ran into each other at the beach that day. The two palled around and around. I'm sorry, it wasn't a planned meeting. It was not a planned meeting. Now, a friend, a family friend brought Peggy, 
and then an uncle brought Wendy, and they okay. just ran into each other and were like, hey, I know you. Yep. Yeah. The two palled around, and around 1 p.m., they decided to go to the parking lot to buy ice creams and headed off together. The last person to see the girls alive reported seeing them in a parking lot with a man who was buying ice cream for them. Quote, The stranger was described as being a white man six foot tall and weighing about 200 pounds, in his 20s with sandy-colored hair, gray eyes, and a humped nose. Authorities initially thought the girls had drowned, but their bodies were never recovered, and Wendy was reportedly a strong swimmer. The man who took Peggy to the beach was an initial suspect, but was questioned, polygraphed, and eventually cleared. Another suspect was a convicted child molester named Kenneth Guy Schultz, who was arrested in Alabama six weeks after their disappearance. Police found a coded notebook that belonged to Schultz that he apparently recorded his crimes in. Inside the notebook was, quote, Peggy and Wendy, Pompano Beach, but Schultz denied having anything to do with their disappearance, and the police were never able to conclusively tie him to the crime. Oh, that's chilling. That seems like a pretty good suspect, but it didn't work out. Weird. I why, know. Like, why would you have your, like, notebook of missing children, you know? Yeah. yeah. It Ooh. doesn't look good for him. No. But they couldn't f- tie him to the crime. On February 29th, 1972... 13-year-old Deborah Lowe was walking to Rickards Middle School in Pompano Beach between 7.30 and 8 a.m. Somewhere along the mile-long stretch between her home and the school, Deborah completely vanished. Authorities initially suspected she may have run away from home to return to West Virginia, where she'd lived until her family had moved to Florida. Her family firmly rejected that theory, as she didn't have a history of rebellious behavior and hadn't taken any of her belongings with her. Yuck, no. No. That's not how this works. No. I'm out of here. Fuck Florida. I'm going back to West Virginia. (laughs) Right. For no reason, without (laughs) any of my things. No. That's the easier alternative. Yeah. And West Virginia is beautiful. I'm not trash talking West Virginia, but if you lined up West Virginia and Florida. To a 13-year-old girl. To a 13-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. I'm picking Florida. Yep. On July 21st, 1972, 17-year-old Pamela Wells and 18-year-old Nancy Trotter were hitchhiking to the beach in Stewart, Florida, when a police officer named Gerard Schaefer pulled over and reprimanded them for taking rides from strangers, falsely told them it was illegal in the county to hitchhike, and insisted on driving them back to the halfway house where they were staying. To make sure they didn't make the same mistake the next day, Schaefer offered to come back and drive the women to the beach to ensure they arrived safely, and they agreed, thankful for the ride. No. The following day, Officer Schaefer phoned his boss, Sheriff Richard Crowder, to report he'd, quote, done something foolish. He said, quote, you're going to be mad at me. He said he had, quote, overdone his job and had been trying to, quote, scare the girls out of hitchhiking in the future for their own good. What Schaefer had actually done was pick up the girls like he'd promised, but instead of driving them to the beach, he drove them to swampy Hutchinson Island. Once in the swamp, he, quote, started making sexual remarks, then drew a gun and told the girls he planned to sell them as, quote, white slaves to a foreign prostitution syndicate. Wow. He then forced them out of the car and made them stand on tree stumps while he tied their wrists and placed nooses around their necks. The way they were positioned, if either of them slipped off of the stumps, they'd immediately hang themselves. (laughs) No. Schaefer left them there, and luckily, one of the girls was able to slip out of her noose and set she and her friend free. He left them? He put them on the fucking stumps, tied up with nooses around their necks, like basically on their tippy toes, and then left. Wow. And I watched a show about it, and the one girl just was able to sort of lean back to a certain position and slip her head out of the noose. Thank God. Wow. I overdid my job. I was just trying to scare the girls. I just didn't want them to do that again. Wow. They made it to the highway where they flagged down an officer to help them. When Schaefer realized Pamela and Nancy had escaped, he had no choice but to half-confess, as they knew his name and would be able to identify him. 
After his half confession, he was fired on the spot and charged with false imprisonment and aggravated assault with a $15,000 bond, which he posted. In November of 1972, Schaefer pled guilty to one assault charge, but the other counts were dropped. What? The judge called him a, quote, thoughtless fool and sentenced him to one year in county jail, followed by three years probation. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> he, t- he tortured those girls. Yes, he kidnapped them at oh fucking gunpoint. Uh, he put them a nooses around their necks in the swamp, left them there to die, and he got a year in jail and three years probation. Oh. What? Like, I mean, that is just some... I'm curious to hear his MO, like if this is what he does. Does he always leave their, his victims to die? Like that's a, a very interesting, like, psych- that's just psychological really torture. Yeah. Yes, it's extremely fucked Like he up. doesn't need to be there while they die, but he knows they're going to. That's really dark. Well, yeah, it's very dark. And to come back and to see the aftermath of them standing there for however long oh. he leaves them there. <laughs> yeah. I do not like it. No. If they're still alive. Right. Gerard John Schaefer was born in Wisconsin on May 25th, 1946, and was the oldest of three children. He later referred to his family as, quote, turbulent and conflictual, and referred to himself as an illegitimate child, and said his father was a, quote, verbally abusive alcoholic, flagrantly, the hardest word to say in the English language, Mm adulterous, and often absent from home on business trips or otherwise. Can you guys hear the fucking murder of crows? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I am not it's, happy. It's not just a weird random soundtrack that we decided to lay in under this. <laughs> Imagine being in the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Crow swamp. No, I am under siege. This, it's been a few years, but every couple summers, the crows just take over my neighborhood, and it's slightly terrifying. So by 1960, Gerard's family had settled in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and according to Schaefer, he'd begun a very troubled relationship with his own sexuality. He reports that he began experimenting with sadomasochism around age 12 and would, quote, tie myself up to a tree and I'd get excited sexually and do something to hurt myself. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. If your oldest just starts doing stuff like that in six years. No, 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 no. I'd be concerned. Yes. Around this time, he would also, quote, masturbate and fantasize about hurting other people, women in particular. And, quote, I discovered women's underpanties. Sometimes I wore them. I wanted to hurt myself. Underpanties <laughs> is very upsetting That's to me, too. I was thinking the same, like, wear all the women's underpanties you want, but please don't call them underpanties. Don't call them underpanties. That's a, If you're oldest son starts calling things under panties <laughs> in six years be even more concerned <laughs> checklist i have a checklist from in six years <laughs> parents <Right>. anyone <laughs> women if your spouse refers to them as under panties you're in danger husbands if your wife calls them <laughs> under panties yeah you're gonna get gone girled it's mm-hmm. fucked up it's the number one sign of psychopathy <laughs> Proven. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> so you go to take this, the test, the psycho, psychopath test, and it's just 50 questions, and it's variations on what you call underwear. It can't you, make me laugh because I'm going to cough. <laughs> <laughs> he claimed that even in his earliest childhood games, he would make himself the victim, quote, I always got killed. I wanted to die. Wow. My father mm-hmm. my father favored my sister, so I wanted to be a girl. I wanted to die. I was such a disappointment to my family as a kid, to my father. He loved my sister. I couldn't please my father. So in playing games, I wanted to be killed. Wow. And maybe it's because, I don't know why. I just don't believe it. I don't believe him for some reason. Mm-hmm. I should because probably... he calls his... Because says these right. things Thank like you. under panties. Thank you for bringing it back around. Yep. Yeah. I I don't know why. I just you don't maybe believe it's, that it's the father stuff that bothers him. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why. I I feel like maybe it's just because we know that most of the time it's the mother that affects yeah. the boys, and so maybe I'm just 
generalizing or something, or maybe just because this guy fucking sucks seriously hard, but I don't know, something, my, my hackles are up with this guy. Well, it feels sort of like similar to, I don't know, it seems just like sort of a lame excuse. Yeah. Um, like t- Ted Bundy blaming porn or right like exactly mass shooters blaming video Metallica games or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. yeah sort of on the same line of that and i'm sure have like having a mean dad affects people differently but yeah right it just yeah it all seems very early exactly to, like there's definitely something underneath this exactly like mental health stuff yeah it all yeah. just feels sort of cobbled together for sympathy that's right. you're exactly right yeah mm-hmm. Schaefer claims he began hearing voices that commanded him to kill and actually attempted to rehabilitate himself in various ways, starting with seeking professional help in 1966, but that help didn't work. Damn it. He thought maybe he'd become a priest, but was rejected by St. John's Seminary because he didn't have enough faith, according to them, and he was so angered by their rejection that he quit the Catholic Church completely. He then quotes, toured the South with moral rearmament, the cheery up with people folks who sang that freedom isn't free. <laughs> Do you remember up with people? It's still around too. I looked it up. It sounds really familiar. When I looked it up, it said up with people, the gayish semi cult that <laughs> I was like the <laughs> headline of one of the articles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very like hippie rainbow people positivity, self-improvement, kind of a mu- with a musical right. sort of twist. Some, was that connected to the Manson family? I don't know. I didn't I dig that like far some of down. Those, some of the family members were part of that. And I could be totally wrong, but that I think there was some piece of it. Let similar. me see. That's a good question. Um, so yeah, upon first Google, th- there's not an immediate... Uh, connection the Marilyn Manson song beautiful people comes up when you google up with people Manson (laughs) but not the same no I'll have to do a little more research so anyway he toured around with them singing gayish cultyish songs then he decided to try out teaching and said his goal was to quote instill American values like honesty purity unselfishness and love but Schaefer was twice dropped from student teaching programs for, quote, trying to impose his own moral and political values on his students. Mm -hmm. His second supervisor recalled telling Schaefer, quote, I told him when he left that he'd better never let me hear of his trying to get a job with any authority over other people or do anything I could to prevent it. Wow, that's some strong words <laughs> <laughs> when the priests don't want you the teachers are like i will fucking follow you to the end of this world to make sure you never teach or have any authority over anybody wow. yeah <laughs> in 1968 he married a woman named martha but two years later she filed for divorce stating quote extreme cruelty no Schaefer recovered from the heartbreak by traveling around the world, during which time he refocused his goals on becoming a police officer. Of course he did. Of course he did. He was rejected by the Broward County Police Department after he failed the psychological test. Oh, that surprises me. But (laughs) Wilton Manor's Police Department hired him despite the fact that he was mentally unfit to serve. Uh, That's so good. Ding, ding, ding. Good. Fucking, we'll take anybody. Thank you. Yeah, send us your tired, your mentally fucking incapable. Right. <laughs> your psychopaths. Young sadomasochists. You or have command hallucinations. St- send people who call underwear underpanties. We mm-hmm. will take them. <laughs> their, their checklist is the opposite of... <laughs> it's like, what do you call uh, your underwear? Underpanties. Done. In. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I picture their like local commercial for the Wilton Manors police department. One (laughs) officer turns around. Do you have command hallucinations? (laughs) Another one turns around. Do you call underwear under panties? We want you. And then they all turn around and start walking toward the camera simultaneously. Yes, exactly. (laughs) There's a home for you at Wilton Manors police department. (laughs) Somewhere in fucking Florida. Anyway. So he was fired by 1972 
And while the official Fired reason... from Wilton Manor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what year did he sign up? Uh, like, 70, 70. Okay. Right. Yeah. Two, two years, I mean... Two years. And while the official reason hasn't been confirmed, the chief at the time said he, quote, didn't have a lick of sense... And there were reports that Schaefer had been, quote, running female traffic violators through the department's computer, obtaining personal information, and then later calling them for dates. No, 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 no. Yup. He just got right down to fucking business wow. and abusing that position. Yeah. And now we've got the cardinal <laughs> screaming at you. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's that, like a whooper will or something? No, no, that's a cardinal. That's a cardinal, too. Uh-huh. No, that would be an odd soundtrack to lay under a true crime podcast. <laughs> Here at Wilton and, Heights or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Indiana State Bird. Sadie and I just want to drive home the fact that we are recording from Indiana. Home Can't state me, pride. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get me going. <laughs> oh, God. Right after Schaefer was fired for either not having any sense and or sexually harassing innocent women, he got the job in Stewart, Florida, where he kidnapped at gunpoint and propped two young women on stumps in the middle of the swamp with nooses around their necks. And that brings us up to speed. Oh, Lord, help me. So it turns out that in 1972, while Schaefer was out on bond awaiting his sentencing for kidnapping at gunpoint and propping two young women on stumps in the middle of the swamp with nooses around their necks, two other young women, 17-year-old Susan Place and 16-year-old Georgia Jessup, went missing in Fort Lauderdale. Damn it. Susan's parents said that the night the friends had gone missing, they'd been picked up by a man named, quote, Jerry Shepard, and they'd headed off to play guitar at the beach. Susan's mother said she got a bad feeling when she saw the older man pick up the girls and so wrote down his license plate. That's amazing. I know. And was also able to tell the police the make and model of his vehicle. I bet she fucking kicks herself for not running the hell out of her house and dragging her child out of the car, but... Like, what are you going to do? You know? I know. I know. What's the chances of your child getting in the car with a serial killer? Yes. Like, not... No, zero, two so percent, whatever. Yeah, wow. Gosh, that you know, poor mom. I know, but thank the God yeah. she did that. So it took until March 23rd, 1973, a long time, for the police department to trace the license plate back to Schaefer. Are you kidding me? No. Who by she, that time, I, yeah, yes, I don't know why. I do not know why. Okay who by that time was spending his time in jail for kidnapping at gunpoint and propping two young women on stumps in the (laughs) middle of the swamp with nooses around their necks. Oh, I hate it. So those girls went missing before the stump. While he was out on bond. He fucking stumped those girls. They, he posted bond. And in the two weeks that he was out, he fucking nabbed these other two girls. I missed that somehow. Yeah. uh -uh. Yeah, man. Yes. After he fucking kidnapped at gunpoint, <laughs> I like and tortured no. some women for several hours in the fucking swamp. Ugh. And the judge was like, "You're a damn fool and got no sense at all." But did you have a nice year. Yeah. God, women just yes. don't hold value. No. Nope. I mean, I know we don't. I mean, everybody knows that that listens to true crime, but it's just like, oh my god. Yeah. Yes. Like, nothing about that scenario says one year in jail. Nothing. No. That's so crazy. And I shouldn't say just women. It's like only white men hold value in this right. country. Like, yes. everybody else doesn't, doesn't. Oh, poor guy. He yeah. just, you know, those girls really acted a fool or whatever. Like, really. Yeah, they did. I mean, they shouldn't have been out there hitchhiking, even though it was perfectly legal. It was not illegal for them to hitchhike. They could do whatever the fuck they want. They should be safe. They should safely get to the beach. Yes. By any means. And, yeah, nope. So Schaefer denied having anything to do with their disappearance, but on April 1st, 1973, some men were collecting cans on Hutchinson Island, which is the swamp where he fucking stump-tortured the other two women, when they came across the remains of two young women. Mm. The bodies were confirmed to be Susan Place and Georgia Jessup. 
Autopsy reports showed that Susan had been shot in the jaw, and authorities determined that the two had been, quote, tied to a tree, decapitated, and butchered. Oh, my God. On April 7th, police searched Schaefer's mother's home, where he stored some personal items, and found... Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Right, Dan, Dan mm-hmm. Lou. <laughs> Quote, A stash of women's jewelry... 100 plus pages of writing and sketches depicting torture, rape, and mutilation murders of young women who he routinely referred to as, quote, whores and, quote, sluts. Oh, no. Newspaper clippings about two women missing since 1969, teeth from at least eight young women and girls who had gone missing in recent years, uh-uh. and, and pieces of ID belonging to vanished hitchhikers Colette Goodenough and Barbara Wilcox, both 19. Holy shit. The two girls had teeth. Oh, God. The two girls had last been seen alive on January 8th, a week before Schaefer was sent to jail in Martin County. And while their skeletal remains were found in early 1977, no cause of death could be determined. Thus, no charges were filed. No, you charge the... No. You file the charges. Yeah, just make it up. Fucking plant evidence. (laughs) I don't care. Get that fucker... One of the news clips they found referred to Carmen Halleck, who I mentioned before, and pieces of her jewelry were found among his things. Damn it. Other pieces of jewelry were confirmed to have belonged to 14-year-old Mary Briscolina, who disappeared from Broward County while hitchhiking in 1972 with her friend, 13-year-old Elise Farmer. Their skeletons were found in 1973, but again... No cause of death could be determined, and so no charges were filed. The exact number of Schaefer's victims is unclear, but District Attorney Robert Stone was able to piece together 34 likely victims. 34. 34. Schaefer responded to this by saying, quote, I've always harped on District Attorney Robert Stone's list of 34. In 1973, I sat down and drew up a list of my own. As I recall, my list was just over 80. (sighs) The next day, given more time to reflect, Schaefer went on, quote, I'm not claiming a huge number. I would say it runs between 80 and 110. But over eight years and three continents, one whore drowned in her own vomit while watching me disembowel her girlfriend. Oh, my God. I'm not sure that counts as a valid kill. Did the pregnant ones count as two kills? (sighs) It can get confusing. Stop. Oh my yeah. god. Yes. Despite the number of victims being somewhere between 34 and 110, there was only enough evidence to convict Schaefer for two of the murders. Shut your mouth. The murders of Place and Jessup. So he was convicted on two counts of first degree murder and was sentenced to two concurrent life sentences. No. He had teeth. <laughs> he had I know. teeth. I DNA know. test those teeth. And charge him for those murders. I know. Courtney. And I know, but it's like a, it's like fucking Charles Ng and Leonard fucking fuck you. You know, like yeah. you have so many victims. I think you're like, oh, I, I would get nervous about entering things into evidence that could just somehow tamper the whole thing or right. something. You know, I'm so sure they were like, okay, we have enough to- eyewitnesses. We yeah. Ha- yeah, like we can Get him on this. He's never getting out of jail, which is, he didn't. But yeah, fucking God. Wow. So life in prison was not easy for Schaefer, as it is reported that other inmates attacked him several times, threw feces at him, and his cell was set on fire twice. I mean, there's, uh, actually, there's, some of it was easy. He started running these, like, weird... Um, like sex scams and stuff out of prison. You can. I didn't t- put any of this shit in the story because fuck this guy is so <laughs> sex hard. Scams. He. I can't remember exactly what he would do, but he would basically like place ads and con these men who would respond to them, all from prison. He. For there's like a book. Money? Yes, there's okay. a, or like black or just for fun. I think I don't oh, think he actually was getting money. I think he was just like fucking with them. Oh my god! He was ratting on other inmates, and to the point that he would try to get them the death sentence as a thrill. What? Yeah, they would tell He's him trying to still murder people. Yes, they would tell him details of their crimes, and he would like rat on them, and then some of them got the death penalty, like Holy went to the electric shit. chair. 
There's a book that his ex-girlfriend from high school wrote that's based on all their correspondence where he goes into great detail about his crimes and claims that he actually ate the two little girls that he stole from the beach. I mean, on and on and on. Yeah. Not even really on and on and on because it's, there's not that much information unless you read the book, I'm sure, but fuck him. Yeah. (sighs) But then on December 3rd, 1995, another inmate quote, barged into his cell, slashed his throat and stabbed him in both eyes. Wow. Schaefer did not survive the attack. No, I bet he didn't. After Schaefer's death, one FBI agent said Schaefer was, quote, one of the sickest. If I had a list of the top five, which would include all of the serial killers I've ever interviewed throughout the country, he would definitely be in the top five. Ooh, I just got chills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When Georgia Jessup's mother heard of Schaefer's death, she said, quote, I'd like to send a present to the guy who killed him. She told reporters, quote, I've always believed he was going to get his. I just wish it would have happened sooner than later. Oh. And that is the story of the worst possible person and serial killer, Gerard John Schaefer. Holy shit, man. Buck and Jr. Wow. I know. It's a, it's another one of those stories. Like, how did he get away with it for <laughs> so long? Know. I don't know. I don't mean, know. He clearly was good at it, unfortunately. You yeah. Know, like, they they didn't find the bodies ever like early on. Right. Right. Oh boy. I know. I know. Wow. That's well, really I think upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he did it so quickly, relatively speaking, you know, yeah. he, it was like eight years and that was over in, in th- three continents. So multiple countries. Wow. So he claims he started at 19. He claims he killed his first victim at 19. Yeah. If you're like tying yourself to trees at 12. Right. I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. Right. Yeah. Very well could have, but I'm so glad he got caught. God. Yeah. So glad he was stupid enough to fucking leave his victims in the swamp to escape. Yeah. Maybe he just was trying on a new way to torture his victims and didn't think that they would be able to get free i mean clearly i don't think they'd get free but yeah yeah that's a really horrible thing to do to somebody so i'm sure he just got a huge fucking kick out of it the thing that really creeps me out about him too is that he had no mo he didn't have there was every it's like a richard ramirez every age yes multiple ways of approaching people you know he just Fair game, all of it. Oh, and, God, I hate it. Yeah. The only thing that, like, the only through line is that they were vulnerable. Like, they were young right. or hitchhiking or, you know, like, he just preyed on vulnerable girls just and women. Taking little babies off the beach, man. Yeah. Taking little t- fucking teenagers as they walk to school. Ugh. Yeah. He's very bad. Very, Ugh. very fucking bad. When you think about, like, you know, he just charmed the shit out of them. Got him to try, like, oh, yeah, I'll take you to school. Come on, hop in. Okay. Oh, Police for sure officer. he's a fucking cop. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nope. There's no better fucking cover for your horrible behavior. And the fact that he, with the girls that hitchhiked that got away, that he brought them home and then said, hey, I'll come back and get you tomorrow. Like, he didn't take that opportunity, like established trust and then came back and did it the next day well a lot of the people like the you know the cia jobs and Mm -hmm. he did that to them too like i'll come get you later right later yeah yes yeah i'm gonna give you something that you want i'm gonna help you in some way you psych i'm gonna do the exact opposite well i don't like that story you're welcome thank you (laughs) good god i I know I know. I read something earlier today that was like, there's probably, you know, like 2,000 active serial killers in the United States Ah! right now. And I was like, cool. That's a lot. Ah. So many people just killing people. That's a lot of people, man. Yeah. Maybe it was the world. I think it was the United States, though. I would. Yeah, that sounds like too few for the world, but a lot for the United States. Yeah. God, and that's just serial killers, just regular old serial killers. That's not like insurance fraud murderers and stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, or like domestic violence. Yeah. Or, yeah. God. 
jealousy, all the cool ways, reasons people kill each other. I could hate it. And I couldn't find very much at all about the victims. A lot of, I think the reason is because they are suspected victims. So there's like a list of, you know, the ones I, I read about are the like most probable victims, but not confirmed victims. You know, they just never really confirmed his victims, but obviously killed a fuck ton of people. Yeah. So that was frustrating because a lot of the information is on the Charlie Project and stuff, and it's just like, this is what happened, but we don't know why, you know, or where, or we haven't ever confirmed it. So there was no Who deep dive are. into the cases, yeah, yeah, to their lives, I mean. Right. And if they're missing, there's no obituaries. And... <laughs> oh, I hate it. So all you fucking poor people out there who were his victims. So sorry. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Mm. Goodbye. Where the crows? <laughs> rah, 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 rah. <laughs> that would have been an appropriate time for them to kick in, <laughs> right? Uh, one of our listeners, we did a Patreon episode last week. Where? Who am I? I don't know. The other day, a couple days ago. <laughs> uh huh. And she works in a psychiatric hospital, and I think her comment. I'd have to look it up, but it was something like, I think it started. <laughs> Uh, command hallucinations are a total bitch. Yeah. Uh, we need to talk to her more. I would love to get some yes. more insight into yes. that, like the science and the... She she talked a lot about how people with schizophrenia are more often victims of crime. Right. Rather than committing crimes, which is right. so true. and So true. But I don't, honestly, I don't know a lot about command hallucinations in particular. And yeah, so when you were either. mentioning that here, I just made me think of that. Yeah. message we got i feel like we Here's should the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. guys i told you when i when there's a dramatic pause <laughs> then you chip in not when we're talking about right. fucking brain science that's not an appropriate time to chime in yeah i feel like we should be like we're simultaneously very far along in understanding the human brain and should be much further along do you know what Big i mean like, yes well i think it's just now becoming understood that we need to treat the brain good like point. we do other yes. physical illnesses that's a really good point yeah like we're just now there so i think it's coming we will right. be there quicker than we think right. but yeah it's just we're and definitely scratching the surface totally and that, that is not to say that the work is not being done by brilliant people so if anybody's a brain scientist who's listening to this who's like bitch we know a lot about the yeah <laughs> i'm not saying that i'm just saying that yeah uh, uh, and that's why we do this. I mean, we've said that a million times. It's definitely why I'm interested in true crime is to understand what the fuck the, what, how, why, mm-hmm. why, why. And I think we're getting a much better, clearer idea. And I think that a lot of it comes down to, you know, kids being fucking abused and neglected and like that mm-hmm. fear and pain manifesting into anger and rage and homicidal tendencies, which is why I don't have a lot of sympathy for fucking bullshit gerard schaefer because mm-hmm. i'm just like did you really have did were, were you really hearing voices i don't think you i don't you know i'm just yeah. not buying it with him whereas other cases i'm like yeah you are a desperately abused little child like right. i am not surprised that you're doing what you're doing but then some people i'm like oh, i don't know maybe maybe your brain is so broken that you you actually were that and now i just don't like you right <laughs> because you're so broken you know yep but yeah i would love to know more about all of it endless any anything that anybody has to share please by please. all fucking means send it along yes um just like you send in names should we talk about some names yes yes oh boy oh my arm hurts i gotta oh. adjust i have a a awesome fucking ice pack thing that Laura gave me that's like you can tie it around your arm. Yeah. I got my vaccination today. That's why my arm hurts. My second. I'm fully vaxxed. Yes. Ready to go to Chi Chi's. Yeah. I was telling Courtney earlier that I, I was, I'm fully vaxxed now. And I was like, maybe I can I have been for a little while. And I was like, I, the kids were driving me crazy. And Ryan was home today. I was like, I'm gonna, maybe I could go to like a coffee shop. Maybe I'm ready for that. You know, I could still wear my mask right. and like sit in a coffee shop. And, Fuck yeah. And uh, write a paragraph in, in silence. And then I <laughs> started hacking and I was like, oh no, oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thwarted. Like what I have is not COVID, but people don't know that. <laughs> Thwarted. 
by your own body. <laughs> so maybe next week I'll, yeah. I'll give the coffee shop a try. <laughs> and I love how readily you just agreed with me going to Chi Chi's. First, <laughs> God, I mean, who doesn't want to go to Chi Chi's? My first destination <laughs> post COVID. No, don't make me laugh. Yeah, my shit's safe. You know, I'm gonna Chi Chi's fried ice cream. Do they still exist? I don't know. Not really. Exist anywhere. Every once in a while, I'll drive by a strip mall or you know and there's like a faint faded outline of a previous chi chi sign and i think about their ketchup like salsa and i'm glad i never have to go to chi chi's yeah, again but i right? also would i would probably go to a chi chi's yeah i would totally go there and get food boys name do they have shit hanging from the ceiling do they hang ribbon yes. curlies from the ceiling is yes. that all chi chi's or was our chi chi's like a special fancy elaborate yeah, chichis i don't know i feel like there was just a lot of shit from the ceiling too i don't know yeah what. it was always dusty it was just falling into your dried up enchilada oh, god you hear me i do you gotta tell your dog to coordinate better too with seriously the nature sounds welcome to the fucking wild kingdom version of they will kill that's right i don't know what she's barking at probably my crows right probably crows <laughs> Okay. Uh names. Um I saw this I don't, I don't know where I saw this but it's the name of a place. <laughs> Bald Knob, Arkansas. <laughs> Bald Knob. Um, oh god. Someone named Destiny Hooker. Yes. So that it, your destiny, your destiny was yeah. with Done. done done great yep somebody had a track coach named mr babe <laughs> <laughs> i need that person to go and get a yearbook photo i need to see mr oh babe I totally. <laughs> mr babe oh god <laughs> uh the same person knew of an inmate named burly grimes so speaking of <laughs> destinies uh-huh Burley Grimes was definitely going to jail. He really didn't have a Burley. choice. Um, okay, so today when I was getting my second vaccination, my intake individual, her name was Yvonne Curlless. And the funny thing was, she had the curliest fucking hair I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Like, ramen noodle hair. Oh, I'm, you know, that kind yes. of hair. Like, it's so curly. Curls. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's ironic. <laughs> did, you, did you say something to her? <laughs> she's pretty intense. She yeah. was my intake person on my first shot. And she has this like, um, what's the Bane, you know, from, is that from Batman? <laughs> like, yes, think, right. Yes. Like, <laughs> like Tom Hardy mask kind uh-huh. of, so, you know, those face shields, but they have like a built in additional thing that goes like around your eyes and nose. And it's really intense. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen those? I I, she, so. Yvonne Curl, is the only person I've ever seen wearing one, but it's, really an intense experience to come so face to face. face shield with additional mask and eye protection well it's like all clear but it's sort of built into this so there's the face shield oh, and then below the shield there's like an additional unit that goes around like your mouth your eyes and those. nose to oh, like wow. yeah so it's very like <laughs> <laughs> so there's no j- joking with yvonne no Curless. no like that's oh, funny your name's Carlos, because your hair just wants you to smack you. You have lots of curls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she turns over the station and gives me COVID on the spot. <laughs> um, and the last one. So this is a, this is an accidental funny name, and it's also another story about Sadie getting really high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day. We are having a little fantastic ladies' day. Sadie and our best friend Sarah and I were out, like, fucking, I don't know what we were doing. Shopping, eating food, you know, fun things. And Sadie, I feel like you were laying down in the back seat of the car. <laughs> what? I, well, I no we were definitely in the back seat of the car. I feel like for, we were stopped somewhere. And you were really high. I was not, because I can't get high, because I go away, go bye-bye. And... And he was reading a sign. Oh, we were at a gas station. Yes, we were at a gas station. And Sadie was reading a sign and was like, oh my God, that's a really cool name. The name on the sign. And the sign said, <laughs> Rip Ron Woods, you're a good friend. 
It's like, it was like, God, that's so nice. I was thinking this First in all, my head. Cool. Yeah. Rip is such a cool name. And it's like, it's so nice that his friends put up a fucking like mini billboard in his honor at the restaurant or whatever that was next to the gas station. I bet Rip Ron Woods was a good friend. <laughs> It said R.I.P. Ron Woods. Oh. You're a good friend. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, poor Rip. Rip. <laughs> Rip. Rip Ron Woods. You're a good friend. That's what Sadie's high price. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could laugh. I'm so stuffy. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. uh, Rip Ron Woods. Rip on. Rip Ron Woods. <laughs> You're a good friend. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Too. I wish. We lived in a world where people just commissioned billboards in honor of their friend being a good friend. Oh, <laughs> Sadie Lord. Rayak, you're a good friend. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> that would make me feel really good. I'd be really happy to see that sign. <laughs> and like an old country buffet marquee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... There you go, guys. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love it so much. So much. It's gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. gorgeous. Um, Speaking of... What? Oh, no. What were you going to say? Ryan picked up a hitchhiker the other day who was walking down the road. Oh, recent. Ballsy. Yeah. 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 Um, And the guy gets in the car and Ryan's driving him down the road. And he said that they both got on their phones. And, like, Ryan yeah. called me to be like, hey, I picked somebody up. I'm going to take them <laughs> down the road or whatever. Uh-huh. And then he, the other guy got on the phone, too, and was laughing. He was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'm safe, I'm safe. <laughs> and then hung up, and they both were like, women. <laughs> <laughs> His girlfriend, me, we were both like, don't fucking, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and, <laughs> And Ryan, oh, these crazy broads. No, and I'm like, thinking that <laughs> picking up perfect strangers on the side of the road is a bad fine. idea. Ugh, God. Yeah. And, um, and he was like, he said, I'll be home in about 10 minutes. And he was, it was like 20 minutes. And I was like, all right, well, he's dead. He's gone. A hundred percent. Yep. He, and he has my Chinese food. This is a problem. <laughs> <gasps> you didn't yeah. mention Chinese food at the beginning of the story. So then I called him and he was like pulling in the driveway. But... <clears throat> I mean, if there was ever a person to pick pick up a hitchhiker, it would be Ryan. Yeah. But yeah, still. I always think about it every time. You are not every the time. person. No, no. There was a guy. It was raining today, and there was a guy with a gas can walking down the road. And I, mm-hmm. I had my children in the car, and I was like, God, yeah. I really like the poor guy. Just needs a ride. Yep. I was like, but that's what he wants me to think. I, <laughs> exactly. He's gonna bundy you. Yes. He's gonna yes. fucking Bruce Lindall you. Yes. Fuck that guy. And I hate. It, with a deep passion that I can't just pick up people and help them on the street, but yeah. you cannot do it. Nope. I will pick up a woman walking with her children. I have done that before and I will yes. do it again. I'm yes. not going to let a woman and her fucking children walk no. down the street, especially like a highway. One time a woman was walking down a highway in my town and like hundreds of people driven by her and just let her, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah. That's I, crazy. I have my a good friend of mine here in town, her sister and her, they were walking down the street, the road, like highway. Yeah. And uh, I was like, hey, you guys doing okay? And she's like, oh, this is just where we go. Like, we just go for walks. <laughs> That's so Midwestern. My <laughs> God. It's so Midwestern. <laughs> People really? fucking walk on highways here, yes, and ride bikes, and they sit in their garages. They have these huge houses. Our houses yeah. are huge. We have lawns the size of fucking football fields. Like, yep. so much space. And Every motherfucker is plunked inside their garage with the garage door open every damn day and every damn night. Mm-hmm. My neighbor, for example, is actually setting up their fucking garage setup as we speak. That is not an exaggeration. I live a block and a half from Lake Michigan. Stunning, beautiful beach. Nope. Mm-mm. Just garage. fucking right in the garage facing a neighbor's house. Like, what are you yeah, doing? It's so crazy. Our neighbors around here do it all the time. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. You guys own property. Spread out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Build a deck. <laughs> Go to the beach. Um, 
Should we do some shouty outies? Yeah. Yes. And my vax is definitely kicking in, so I apologize if it gets weird. <laughs> well, it's just I'm starting to feel ship. a little mushy. Yes, yes, it's engaging. Robot anger yeah. engaged. <laughs> I hate garages. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist makes you hate Plot garages. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Che P. <gasps> che, spelled C H E. C-H-A-Y. Oh, plot twist. Series plot twist. I know. Che, I love, Chai. I think probably Che. Probably Che. That is a fucking great name. Beautiful I name. Mean, you do. You really can do anything with a name like Che. Mm-hmm. Really? Yes. Name something you can't do with a name like Che. I can't think of a single thing. Mm. Except for can, not be cool. Yes, you cannot not be cool right. if your name is Che. Yes. What if somebody paid you a lot of money to not be cool? I mean... Oh, well, I mean, that, that would be pretty easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people pay me to want not be cool right now. <laughs> also, COVID has made us all not be cool. Oh, and man. I don't know how I'm going to get out of it, right? Right. No. Like walking my dogs midday in my fucking pajamas. Yes. Like, I know. I, I know Ryan and I went down to the neighbors the other day to hang out. And uh, I think we were like nervous. It felt like, yeah. okay, so what do you, how, like, what do you do? What do we wear? Ryan was like, are we too matchy? And I was like, we wear shirts and jeans, buddy. Like, we're fine. <laughs> you know, but if, you know, it just, it's been a year <laughs> since we've hung out with people. <laughs> Putting on makeup like fucking Betty Davis and whatever yes. happened to baby Jane. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, like, and then we hung out and it was so fun and felt normal, but it definitely, it's like training wheels. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it wouldn't take, I, I'm already not cool for free. So right. <laughs> I would take that job. Yes. If anyone's paying people to not be cool. Yep. I'm in. I would. Here's my sell. resume. <laughs> Here's Jay, my cover unfortunately, letter. Unfortunately, Che would not. She, no. no. She's not out. She, they are not qualified. Nope. Nope. Uh, thank you so much to Mia D. Oh, me and Shay probably are friends, and they probably Definitely. commiserated because those are both incredibly fucking good names. Very cool. You don't even have to try. No. I think of one, name one Mia that is not cool. There is not one. There isn't one. Love them no. all. Thank you so much to Sarah B. Sarah B., before you try to break my heart, think about what you're doing with your power, because <laughs> you are gorgeous. You are... Everybody wants to be close to you. Wow, Courtney. That was mm -hmm. good. Thanks. That was really good. <laughs> Surprising. I, you know, if you're trying to pay me not to be cool, then you put on that track and you're like, she's yeah. not qualified either. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Thank you so much to Nina D. Okay. Nina, Mia, and fucking Che. Yep. Hanging out at the tapas bar. <laughs> 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 I can definitely get the job of not being cool. Oh, totally. Definitely. Yeah, Fucking early 2000s <laughs> version of cool. Oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah, you guys. I, see, I don't even know where you're hanging out because I'm not cool. No, not you know cool who's going to join know. their cool party? Tell me. Last but not least is Brie A. <sighs> Maybe yep. Bree's got to join the party, too. <sighs> got to pull up a spot at the top of part. <laughs> <laughs> Get some stuffed peppers. <laughs> I'm assuming that they're all, like, millennials or Gen Z. Maybe they're not, but I feel like names have just gotten much cooler. Or maybe it's just an age. I don't know. Now I'm getting existential, but <laughs> I don't know a lot of Bree's of my generation, and that's a really beautiful name. Yeah. Well, you know, I no, I'm not going to go there. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, but like, we, on one hand, we have the Breeze and the Mias and the Ninas, Chase, and then the other hand, we have, like, mm -hmm. the Braxtons and the, you know. Yeah. But I, I, I don't want to get into the Make fun of people's like. names. No. Yeah. Because I like yeah. all the names. But you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. Yep. Got to have, it's a, it's a bell curve <laughs> <laughs> it's a bell curve and you know what i know about people named braxton what? they say under panties oh no yeah some of our listeners might have sons named braxton and yeah sorry guys mm -hmm. you need to really 
take them in for early testing. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what was, what was on our list. Under panties. That's it. Okay. Just what do you call underwear? <laughs> what do you call the thing women wear under their pants? Oh, and there's Lord. just 50 questions. And every third the, question is under panties. <laughs> Taking your kids to the <laughs> pediatrician and be like, can I take, can my kid take that under panties <laughs> test? <laughs> I'm feeling a little worried. I named them Braxton and I don't know. It's just, things feel weird. <laughs> I really wish I could laugh. <laughs> well, Braxton is in the 90th percentile. He, his motor skills are right on, right where we want him to be. Um, but he did score uh, 32 out of 50 on the underpanties test. <laughs> no! <laughs> what do I do? Sorry, ma'am, there's nothing we can do. No, we it's don't know enough about brain science. <laughs> brain scientists are just fucking... <laughs> Get back and aren't doing shit. Well, They're barely doing anything. Damn it! We're simultaneously really far along and not far at all. Uh, the pediatrician screamed. Oh uh, God! <laughs> and then twist the mother because she's female says, "Sir, I am a brain scientist. You assumed I wasn't because you're a misogynist." <laughs> And storms out with Braxton oh, and God. fixes his brain and everyone's okay in the end. And Braxton does not become a serial killer. Don. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, thanks for your support, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Self-fulfilling prophecy at the yeah. beginning of this one. Woo. Woo. You get double vaxxed and... <laughs> you never know what happens. Sucked right down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um... I have to go. Yeah, I got a cough. I got a cough. I need to go cough now. But we love you guys. And if you want to find us and hang out with us and talk to us, and I put a mixtape up yesterday or made a mix. Yeah, I haven't even looked at what it was. It's Maybe good. Go. It's pretty Check good. Check it out. It's a little manic, but it's a it's a late pandemic mixtape, so it feels yeah. appropriate. Uh, find us at on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at They Will Kill. Go to our website, theywillkill.com. Email us at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Rate, review, subscribe. Yes, I think we got another review yes. for not us, which is, I'm not going to just say that any like negative review is not for us. Right. <laughs> but I definitely think that review yeah. is not for us. Talking about like monotone, putting them to sleep. And that could be true. I mean, not that we aren't boring, but I don't think we're terribly right. monotone. No, so. we're not monotone. Boring, fine. I'll take that all day. But yeah. monotone, yeah. and my voice sounds like a confirmed fucking rubber band scraping down the side of a yeah. piece of glass or something. I so. can't wait for the five star review that isn't for us. And they'll be like, they, I would pay them to be cool. <laughs> and then we'll just know it's not for us because that's well, nobody would ever pay us to be cool. Pay us to be not cool. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and then in parentheses, Brie, Mia, and Jay. And Jay, Nina. on the other Nina, hand. Don't forget Nina. And Nina. That I would pay them to not be cool. Yep. That's what the review will say. That's right. Uh, um, thank you, AJ Bergans, for our music. Thank you so much. And remember. Oh, God. If you... Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Go get your vaccine. Yes, please. It makes you weird. It makes you robot angry. It makes you mad at garages. It's yep. worth it. Save yep. some fucking lives. Let's yep. go to Chi Chi's. Let's go to Chi Chi's. Let's go to Chi Chi's. I can't go to wait. Can't wait to go to the coffee shop and not cough on people. Exactly. Your body might betray you before you go to Chi Chi's, but eventually <laughs> you get to go to Chi Chi's. Yes. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>